is, is picking a rifle for an elk hunt, they want to focus on, you know, what brand of rifle and everything do I pick. Mm -hmm. But as a hunting guide, you focus on something else. The scope, right there. Why the scope? I, I would say 80% of the time, if I get somebody on an animal, the reason they don't kill it is target acquisition. Can't find it. I've been there. I had that this year. I took a neighborhood kid out. It was first hunt ever. And he just... He just couldn't quite find the animal in the scope. It just took too long. And that's true of a lot of guys. Even if you've been shooting your whole life, when I go to ranges and stuff, you know, we'll say, hey, shoot the gong at 500. And it's like a 30-second procedure oh, to yeah. find the gong in your in your scope. I, I've literally had to basically put the scope on an animal, mm -hmm. not touch it, and just tell my client, get down and pull the trigger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that's the only way they could find it. So the quick tutorial, if you haven't done it, really the only way is you're gonna have your, you're gonna put it up, look dead at it with your, with your eyes, and then just lift the gun right into place. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep both eyes open and I'm looking with my left eye right at the thing and then I kind of focus to my attention to the right and you can see it right in there. Other thing is, you were just gonna say. Yeah, you're gonna wanna have your, your scope dialed all the way to the lowest power or towards the lowest power, depending on the range that you're looking. And then once you find it in the scope, then you can raise that scope back up. This one's a, a what is it? Five, uh, five, five to 25. To, five to 20, like that's a perfect scope. I think mm -hmm. a four to 24 is like my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mine too. But that's like a great scope. Mm -hmm. for pretty much all ranges. I agree. So I like the four because then you can zoom way out mm -hmm. to just get your bearings. So anyway, yeah, scope, huge part of it. And I totally agree with you. If every scope were a four to 24, I'd die a happy man. <laughs> okay, lots more to talk about, about picking an elk rifle, but we're actually on an elk hunt here. So it's first thing in the morning now. We're heading out on the snowmobiles and we're gonna see if we can get in on one. Then we'll talk more about the guns. We just popped over the top. <laughs> Two cow elk right there. They just bedded. They went into some real thick stuff and just plumped down. But they're only 378 yards right now. Something's going down. We got these things. I was on the trigger, the scope on the vitals, but we couldn't find it in the camera, which is hard to do sometimes. And so I just couldn't quite pull the trigger. So <sighs> no. Okay, we gotta move out. Let's go get them. A lot of different hunting rifles out there. So we only have one with us today. And so let's cut actually to my office for a second. We're gonna go into the gun vault. And I wanna show you a few guns that are well suited toward an elk rifle and some that really aren't, even though they're good guns. So on this hunt, you're gonna see that I'm using the Sako 90 Quest. We're not talking about it too much in this video. Um, because we have a different upcoming video where we're just featuring this gun because it is amazing. It, it is the most impressive gun that I have probably ever had in this room. It's, it's really cool. Uh, we're going to be talking about it in an upcoming video. Really enjoying that for this hunt. But the real question is, what kind of elk hunt are we going on? And that's the first question I would ask. You know, if somebody says, you know, what, what elk hunting rifle, first question is, is this a true backpack hunt where you're carrying camp around with you on your back? Because you might have 40, 50 pounds of just camping gear and food and water and stuff. Then we add a 10 pound rifle, your binocular harness, and eventually we got to carry meat out. And so when that's the case, and we're just going for the sleekest, lightest possible rifle that can still shoot accurately, um, will give up on features, then you might want something like this. This is a Tika T3X Super Light, very, very lightweight platform, no muzzle device, just go for max lightweight. Um, the only thing that I, I don't skimp on is a scope. I will take a bigger full featured scope. To me, that, that's a big advantage. But a scope, weight consideration can be a lot. I mean, here's a big old competition uh, Vortex Razor compared to something really lightweight like this Huskamas scope, this is just gonna be a lot better suited for a backcountry hunt. Um, but for me, I'll, I kind of go in the middle somewhere, even for my backcountry rifles, I'll take just a little bit more weight. And so that's the first question I ask is, what kind of hunt are we actually talking about? And it, whenever I can, I'm gonna take something a little bit more stout, especially in those bigger cartridges, because they just shoot a little bit better. Mm. When you're out here in the winter, it's 
Sometimes you got to do stuff with your hands, messing with the snow machine or, or your gun or something. That's why it's nice to have these Neberon gloves. These are heated gloves, has a battery, and you just press the button right here. You can see it's turned on right now. And they're really nicely waterproof. The cool thing is, you know, gloves, all they can do is keep your heat in. But if your hand's already frozen, it can take forever to warm up your fingers. But because these have their own heat source, you can do your stuff, put your hands back in it, and they're immediately warm. Also good for taking a shot when you're hunting because you can keep your hands warm so that you can manipulate the trigger well. Thanks to Neberon for sponsoring this video. And when you get your gloves, use this discount code to get 10% off your already historically low price. These are my top five cartridges for elk. And those are Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just highlight the top ones. Both of us put seven PRC at the top. Oh, 100%. I, I know people roll their eyes at that because it's still a new cartridge. Um, you know, is it very different than a 7 mag? No, it's not. But it allows you to shoot higher BC bullets, which is huge, um, and and heavier bullets. You, mm -hmm. You're going to penetrate a little bit better. Um, it's just a small difference. If you already have a 7 mag, you, Keep it. you're good. That's great. And then 7 <laughs> mag makes both of our top lists for that same reason. Uh -huh. What else What else are notables for you? For youth, I would probably go 7 mm 8 Okay. I love the sevens. They don't kick a lot. They have really good high BC bullets. Man, probably. I like seven mm 8 for youth. Other one that I really like for youth is 270. 270 is a great elk gun. The reason that I would kind of default 270 instead of seven mm 8 is just it's flatter. Yes. And it's just, especially with the newer shooter, where it's hard we to can be like... cut through some wind. It's just, anyway, that's kind of my thought. Then that's six eight Western two is great. It's just not as common. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't know. I, probably the next one on my list would be a 30 out six. Great on my list as well. Um, and then the last one, you'll hate me, but it's a 308. We can't be friends. <laughs> it's just a, it, it's a childhood cartridge. It's childish. <laughs> you ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that, that childhood cartridge. I killed probably my first six or seven elk with it. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, I, I'm I'm messing around. I, a 308 <laughs> is awesome. It's it's cheap to shoot, so you can get to shoot a lot, and it is very capable. But it does. It, it has probably some of the same limitations that shooting copper bullets out of a 300 Win Mag would, yep. honestly, range-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this hunt is a perfect example of it. I know people are going to freak out when I say this, but it's just the truth. When it's there's no foliage, it's wide open, the snow is deep up to your waist, you're not going to sneak in to 100 yards. No. You're not going to. There's no way. The shots are going to be longer in this country yep. uh, for this particular hunt. And so I really feel like something that shoots a little flatter is is a nice advantage. A hundred percent. That's where, honestly, I feel like the 7 PRC is probably the king of elk cartridges. I, I think it is. I think it's going to be for a while. Yeah. So the problem with being a hunter on YouTube is there's video evidence. <laughs> we did not see that elk behind us the whole time. After we finished, finished that segment... We turned around and we saw an elk butt going right over the top of that mountain. Tried to get it on the other side, could not find it. And then we watched the video back and it was right there the whole time in the video and we missed it. You guys are never going to let me live this one down. After the last 10 days of just having that picture in my mind of that elk in my <laughs> scope and I didn't pull the trigger, <laughs> it is not happening today. Camera's ready, not ready, doesn't matter. <laughs> what trigger's getting pulled? We got elk spotted at 450. Brand new first time hunter spotted him. I don't mean to brag, but I just outguided the guide. Let's go. I never thought we were going to do this. The funny thing is, that group of two is exactly where they were, the ones that were in the video last week. Same time of day, group of two, same spot. <laughs> That's what they get for trying to taunt us, Garrett. Oh my gosh. So we got to talk about that kill shot. The kill shot went perfectly kind of at the top left of the heart and into the lungs. The elk was dead in seconds. Perfect shot, exactly what you want to see. 
if you watch the video, in fact, when I when we watch the video after, we're like, we're like, what the crap? Because it looks like it gets hit in the butt, but it's just a ripple as it's tensing its muscles. If you watch really slow, you can actually see it pierces right in, heart and lung first, and then it's tensing his mus muscles back there. And we cleaned out the elk. It was definitely right there, and the elk was dead in five seconds. Just didn't want anybody to think that this is a gut shot. Ding it's dong, the elk is gone. No, we shot one, it's dead. It's dead, baby. <laughs> when Let's you go. said ding dong, the elk is gone, I was like, we already knew that. All right, we got our elk down, but uh, we got to talk a little bit about bullets as part of the rifle system uh, <laughs> that you're using here. So we have a total other video that's all about lead versus copper uh, that has some, I think, some cool information. But uh, first of all, just a few that, that are going to be kind of your standouts. So I, anything bonded is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Anything copper is going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, those are bullets that are going to penetrate. A bonded bullet means it's chemically bonded or, or the jacket to the, the lead core. So they are going to stay together a lot better. You're going to get that deep penetration. Mm -hmm. Then there's another class of bullet, which is your cup and core bullets. Mm -hmm. so things like your ELDX, your burger bullets. Yep. It goes on forever, right? It does. What do you think of those? Oh man, that you, you could jump into a whole wormhole right there. But you know, as a rule of thumb, I like to go bonded for elk. But the gyroscopic stability sometimes isn't quite as good just with how they put the bonded bullets together. So cup and core bullets can be really, really good for accuracy, and they tend to carry a little bit better out to longer ranges. That yeah, means... your, your real sleek, real high BC bullets, your real accurate stuff that you could go to a match or hunt with, yeah. they're going to be cup and core. That being said, I think that most people are going to keep shots. You, really, most people, especially whitetail hunters that are coming out to hunt elk, they shouldn't shoot past about 400 yards anyway. Bonded bullets are what I would probably recommend. Copper bullets are also very similar. Those are what I would recommend. If you're going to shoot close range, I would not go with burger bullets. They tend to blow up on thick skin game like elk, and I've never had good luck at close range with burgers. All right, to the man who spotted the elk that went down the, goes the victory nugget. Four keys to set up your rifle. Just a couple little things that have helped me. Number one, have something to cover your scope. Don't leave your scope naked like this. So many times I've got rain on the lens, you know, got fogged up in the morning, snow on there. Once it's fogged up and wet, it's so hard to dry. And I have had situations where you pull up the scope and you can't see it a darn thing. So have something to cover your scope. Second, I lost my thread cap today, but almost, this is a rare time when I am not hunting with a suppressor. I'm almost always hunting with a suppressor. It's so cool when you shoot an animal suppressed because the herd looks up, looks around and they just don't spook. They just stay there. And you can almost always get more than one shot into the animal. And I shoot until they're on the ground, even if it was a perfect shot the first time. So a suppressor is awesome. If you do have this, throw a piece of tape over the, over the muzzle just so that we don't get snow in there. Would have helped me today so I didn't lose my thread cap. Next is the support. I have a bipod on here. That's kind of a rarity for me because I always have my backpack with me. I plunk my backpack and I shoot off that. 90% of my shots over the last five years from Texas to Alaska to Utah, Idaho, wherever, 90% of the shots I've been able to get prone. I know some people say they never get prone, but um, maybe it's just the way I hunt or I don't know what, but I, I just am looking for a spot. Where could I possibly get prone to take this shot? And the last thing is having a card on your gun. It's the apps are great. I use the apps too. And if I have all the time in the world, they're just feeding, that's cool. But it's so nice to have this for a quick situation to just have your yardages, MOA, everything right there. Better than that though, is turret tags from Backfire. That's gonna be an upcoming product, gonna be really cool and cheap. But one cool thing that I have on here is, so I'm shooting with a copper bullet today the velocity, notice 400, 450, look at just 500 yards, that bullet is under 2,000 feet per second. Not all copper bullets are going to expand. And so that's a reminder to me, hey, you got a limit here. 
The other thing that's just a reminder for my limits is sometimes I put the flight time in seconds of the longer shots so that I can remind myself if it takes one step in whatever, half a second, it can absolutely take a step and you just shot it in the guts. And so that the flight time is not about some calculation to you know shoot super crazy long ranges. It's a reminder to me, hey, heads up, this thing has to be absolutely still because if it takes one step, you missed. So if you wanna kill an elk like this, how about 3250 for uh, for to be able to hunt with Twinkies? So one, I'm I was really excited when you told me about this concept because most guided elk hunts are yikes! Like <laughs> they're so expensive. Like a cheap one is seven thousand, and that's very a crappy cheap. One. Very cheap. So this is over the counter tags mm -hmm. in Utah, so anybody can come. You got spots open for this fall, yep. 2024. Yep. They're hunting with you, but the way that the price gets driven way down to 3250 is they're going to be multiple people in camp and you're kind of teaching you're teaching courses and teaching them things, giving them lessons. Yep. You know you can point them to the areas to go and you can even go with them sometimes, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're also going to be going with them by themselves out yep. because there's a smaller group. So by having a bigger group it makes the price way cheaper for way everybody cheaper. else think of it as a mentored hunt more than a guided hunt really what i'm trying to do is teach people how that they can come out hunt diy build some confidence and do their own thing every year where they don't have to pay for a guided hunt two three years in a row 12 14 grand or even come out here for six seven years before they figure out how to hunt elk yep you know 3200 bucks is super cheap for an elk hunt and it's going to save a lot of a lot of people a lot of money in the long term i hate it it's frustrating because it is a premium rifle but I just don't even know what to complain about. I, I, it, it's one of the, it is just the finest rifle that I've <laughs> reviewed. You know, there are a lot of different styles, you know, whatever, Fierce Mountain Reaper is a totally different style that I love. But in terms of just like, feels like fine craftsmanship, uh -huh. holy cow. Okay, so you looking at that V patch, just that little piece of white at the top left of it. Going hot. Oh, Crushed yeah. it! Exactly nice in the shot. middle. That is such a good gun.